Hey, welcome to our little segment we have on YouTube, and this is the way we like to take things off the cuff a little bit. I've got to give a, a confession. I spent half the day re-watching a Liverpool goal against Arsenal, a very good Arsenal side, about 15, 16 years ago, by you, sir, <laughs> Neil Mellor. And, I mean, how often do you watch that goal on a weekly basis? Do you know what? I probably only watched it five or six times today. Um, <laughs> it's, do you know what? It, it, was, it was nice to have a moment at this really special football club. Liverpool means a lot to me. I came through the youth system there at Liverpool and it was great to have one of those moments. Now, the big thing about that game was it was against the invincible Arsenal. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're looking round at some of the players on the pitch. Henri was playing, Van Persie, Vieira, Fabric, as you're thinking, some team. That. So, so it was a nice moment to get the winning goal that day. I was shattered afterwards. I was that tired, I had to go home and watch match of the day when I got home with, with my mum and dad. I still live with wow. my mum and dad there. There you go. And, of course, it was the days before social media and all that, but I honestly think Lehman was a bit slow. I'm joking. Of course, it was... It I've was actually a... never seen it. You've never seen it? No, I have really. Oh, I just read it. Oh, you, you, you have no idea what I'm talking about. No, but, but he's right. He's right. When you're a young kid growing up at the, the football club that, that you love and you come through the academy, it's great that a lot of young kids do get the opportunity. I played for Manchester United's first team, but no one, ever, no one even knows that. The fact that Neil's got an iconic moment for him is, is fantastic because... The all the academy coaches will be talking about, obviously, Steven Gerrard reached this level, but you can still do what Neil done, have an iconic uh, moment at a football club, but then go and have a career elsewhere. We're going to go and watch it now. I'm going to go not, show I've you. got my phone here. We can just bring it up on YouTube. <laughs> Are you still a Manchester United supporter? I am. Like I said, I went to Newcastle um, last night. Um, wasn't a fantastic performance, but new manager coming in, trying to get his ideas across. Um, I think we've got world-class players, but when I watch Liverpool and, and Man City, we're just we're just like years well, away from them. That's the thing. I, in case you can't tell anybody who's watching right now, you have a very strong Mancunian accent. Does it hurt? Does it hurt seeing how well his side, training behind us, are doing? Not just this season, but recently won the Champions League not too long ago. Recently, more recently than Manchester United, Champions of England as well. So where I am the last three or four years, where Neil's been for the last <laughs> 25 before that, no, I think it runs in cycles. When you're losing, I, you know, the, the best British managers ever lived in, Sir Alex Ferguson. It does take time. We didn't think it'd take this much time. The fact that we spent over a billion pounds in trying to get a squad capable of challenging for a Premier League is even a more frustration. I think we've got the talent. We've got players that are capable of doing it. But we spoke about before. There's something not right in a football club. Yeah. Liverpool have got it. Man City have got it. And we need to get it whether it be Ralph Rangnick that takes it forward or we get a new manager in the summer that, that gets our identity back. How are we going to play? If Liverpool win or lose tonight, I don't know if they're going to win or lose, but I know how they're going to play. Yeah. When Man City play, I know exactly what I'm going to see week in, week out. With Man United, it's just so bitty and, and, and all over the shop at times. That, that That's the biggest frustration. The rivalry in football is massive. Man United and Liverpool, that will never change. Liverpool fans can really enjoy watching the team at the moment and we've had success, won the Champions League, won the Premier League. United are having a bad spell. I enjoy watching United because they're having that bad spell. I know they will return and maybe dominate at some period in the future. But at this moment, this Liverpool team will be spoken about in years to come. This is a great era for Liverpool supporters to watch this team. Where does Klopp rank now amongst the, the greats of Liverpool in terms of management? Exactly that. He is one of the greats. Um, the success, the connection at Liverpool is so important. You look at the away fans here tonight, the home fans at Anfield. Fans around the world connect with the first team manager, Jurgen Klopp. You feel like part of the family, part of the football club. And I think that's quite unique, quite hard for a manager to achieve. Jurgen's done that by having success, really good team to watch, but he connects and understands what the football club's all about. So he is one of our greatest. Yeah. Well, the thing is, when you talk about Sir Alex Ferguson, he was there for so, so long. And we know they haven't really... I know they finished second once or twice since he's retired, but they've never really challenged for the Premier League title. It's been dominated. Well, Leicester won it. Uh, Chelsea won it a few times. And, of course, recently, it's either Manchester City and Liverpool. But when you look at what happened with Sir Alex, is there a concern maybe when Klopp leaves? Because he said... But he's pretty much said, I'll leave at the end of my contract. I think it's 2024. 20, is there a concern once he leaves I think the, the club? biggest difference is when Sir Alex left, Ryan Giggs, Paul Scholes, Rio Ferdinand, Patrice Evra, the core of the experienced players all left at the same time. David Gill. So David Gill. I think it's important, important now. Salah's contract we spoke about before yeah. is they need to start getting that freshness. So Alex Ferguson was the best manager because he made team after team after team. 
Pep Guardiola's on his second team now. I think that's what Klopp's next step is, to build another team to continue what he, what he started. Because I asked this, and before you give the answer, I stalked to Instagram today, and of course, he has put a picture of Steven Gerrard up. <laughs> Back when Villa went to Anfield, and I saw Gerrard replied to you, but are you secretly hoping that he's the one that will be taking over from Jurgen Klopp? Because that would be a fairy tale story. Yeah, one day. I, I think ultimately, you ask any Liverpool supporter now, we don't want Jurgen to reign to end, because we've got a manager, who, like I say, has got that connection, is bringing that success. We are challenging for all the biggest trophies in football. It's been a while since we've been able to, to do that and enjoy that. So long may it continue that Jürgen's here. We love Steven Gerrard. You say I look like him. Apparently I'm the ugly version. Did you say I was the ugly version? Or I the, said he was a better looking version. Yeah, looking version. Really? You're saying that now. You're, he's an <laughs> imperfect clone of you. Let's put it that way. An but, but, imperfect but clone. Steven will always be loved at, uh, at Liverpool uh, and will always have a role, whatever that is, whether it's manager one day, for the time being, we love Jürgen as first team. I manager. think he's perfectly so. Perfect. Perfectly so. And the other question, I guess, which is more in relation to this season, as much as we speak about the fabulous job that Klopp has done, the rebuilding process under Ralph Ragnick, for now at least, how do you stop Manchester City? Because they're the ones who are currently top of the table, not, not Liverpool. The simple answer, you can't. If Man City are on, on, their, on their game, no one can stop them. Without a striker. They've, they've play, I was about to say that. They've played no... They score six, they score five, they score, they score at will. But what they've got is they've got... If you, if you want to sit off and they can play to feet, but when you play with no striker, you need midfield runners. And they've got a load of midfield runners, unselfish, that will make space for others, but also do the, do the hard yard to get in a six-yard box to score. They, Man City score a lot of tappings. Mm. And, and to score a lot of tappings, you've got to work hard. And people don't see that, they just see all the fancy football. But um, they're the best team. Liverpool and Man City are the best team, but the most hard-working team as well. Yeah, uh, same for you. I mean, how do you topple Manchester City? It could really, it could yeah. legitimately come down to the home and away fixture for both sides, Anfield and the Etihad, to who wins the title. Uh, long way to go. We, we don't know what will happen in January. We don't know what injuries may, may occur. We don't know how COVID will affect the season. Afcon. As well. this, this, this African Cup of Nations. There's a lot of uncertainty at this moment. A lot can happen. City and Liverpool are the best teams. I hope it's a battle all the way to the end. And I'm going to be biased and hope my boys, Liverpool, yeah. can do it. And don't forget, Chelsea aren't too far behind and they are champions of Europe for a reason as it currently stands. Okay, gents, thank you so much for this. If you want to leave a comment about any of the talking points here, just fire away and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. But I think we need to get to our seats because the match is going to start soon.